is it time to stop eating meat? I suppose I could put you up both on the spot here, Emily. I mean, are you a vegan vegetarian? Should we be? I'm not a vegan vegetarian, but I do eat an awful lot less meat than I once did. And, and I think that's you know, that's the most important thing. It's about moderation. Um, the other thing that's really critically important is just wasting less food. The amount of food waste is really shocking. Um, it's estimated that some 20 billion pounds worth of food waste is produced in the UK each year. And an awful lot, a lot of that is edible food that's just being thrown away. Um, something like 20 million slices of bread um, that could be eaten, put in a bin each year. It's complete waste. And the emissions associated with that are all the way from the emissions associated with growing that food in the first place, processing it, packaging it, it, transporting it, as well as then what happens when it's thrown away and potentially sent to landfill. So there's an awful lot that can be done additional to looking at your diet um, just to reduce the amount that we're wasting. Yeah, informing your choice is so important, isn't it? And when you're looking at some of the alternatives that you can pursue, it's important to know as well about the provenance of those alternatives. And you look at the simple fact here about avocados and you realise actually you think you're doing a virtuous thing, but there's a lot of water that goes into the production of avocados. How do people inform their choices, Dan? Well, that's that's really really difficult. I mean, I'd echo Emily really. So, uh, getting rid of you know meat and fish intake entirely is quite difficult. Uh, reducing it um, significantly is actually easy enough. I found it easy enough. But it's not just about going you know, cold turkey. Excuse the pun. You know, there's actually going to be a very large uh, plant-based meat market, uh, possibly worth by 35 billion by 2027, according to uh, Unilever. And, you know, veganism and vegetarianism is on the rise uh, around the world. Um, but as I say, you don't have to completely go uh, meat free or, or fish free. It has to be a choice and people have to want to do it. At the end of the day, though, locally sourced seasonal fruit and veg remains the, you know, the best the best option on the table. Yeah. And what do you think about this proposal in the Netherlands, Emily, to force farmers to cut down on the number of livestock? Is it, Do we need radical solutions? Actually, I think the critical thing is to work with farmers um, to look at how they can reduce their emissions. And that's something that we've been doing um, locally in around Cambridge, working with the farmers to see how they can alter their farming practices in a way that has a dramatically less impact um, on the environment. And actually, it ends up being beneficial for the farming processes themselves as well in many instances. Yeah. And do you agree with that just briefly, Dan? Yeah, I, th I think you have to take people on, on the journey. I don't think people will do, as we've seen over the last, you know, whatever period of time, people don't necessarily want to be forced to do things. But the Dutch are pretty progressive. The Netherlands is pretty progressive about things like uh, gas boilers as well and not having them uh, okay. installed. But you've got to socialise that uh, with with the market and having, you know, living in a low-lying low land with a dike potentially at the end of your garden really focuses okay. the market.